Today we will be talking about how to survive the coronavirus recession, a new book by Riho Okawa. There are three chapters in this book. The first chapter is how to survive the coronavirus recession. Chapter two, how to strengthen your immunity. And chapter three, current view on the coronavirus infection. Q&A session on the lecture, My Philosophy of Life. These are three very incredible chapters, and they really cover all the issues that we're dealing with right now in terms of the coronavirus. So we learn first about the economic side, then we learn about the more health side of the issue, and then the last one talks a little bit more about life itself and how to live in such coronavirus times. So, John, I know that you've read this book, and I just wanted your quick summary of this book and、uh, what you can learn from it. Yeah, I mean, this is、uh, you know, one of the most timely books, <laughs> I think, published in the contemporary times, to be perfectly honest. You know, every, there's a lot of、uh, information about the coronavirus, and it's mostly numbers, statistics. But with this, we have inf- it's essentially a guidebook about how to navigate living in this time. And,、uh, you know, as Dylan was saying, it, you know, it, it does go through kind of the、uh, economic and government political elements of it. It goes through concepts, you know, such as immunity and how to boost your immunity and things of that nature. And then, you know, also、uh, the spiritual concepts behind. The coronavirus and other viruses, and how they function in a similar manner to certain types of spirits.、Mm, yeah, that's really true. And how you said similar types of spirits. Most people aren't aware of what's really going on. In the preface, Master Okawa writes A state of emergency was declared for about a month, and it left micro businesses, small and medium sized businesses, enlarged businesses, seemingly possessed by grim reapers, gods of destruction, gods of bankruptcy. And gods of poverty. In the Japanese terminology, perhaps the readers might be more familiar with such terms, but in the Western sphere, we might not fully be aware that in fact there are malevolent entities which are bringing things like death, destruction, bankruptcy, and poverty, and they are possessing people, possessing CEOs, and、uh, possessing businesses as a whole and driving them into ruin. So, at the same time the coronavirus spreads, a lot of malevolent spirits are spreading their influence as well. That's a very scary thing to be aware of. And this book really teaches us what that means and how we can prevent it. My question to you, John, is since people these days are facing a lot of fear and anxiety in these coronavirus times, is there any tips that you can offer from this book on how to overcome such fear and anxiety? Yeah, I mean,、uh, well, there's a lot of advice、uh, given in this book about that. I, I think part of it is Master Kawa discusses a, a concept、uh, that really stuck out to me, which was to accept the span of life that you're given.、Mm. You know, I really appreciated that. And it's not, it doesn't only apply to this time, I think it applies just to life in general. I mean, you know, most of us are faced with some type of fear of death. And we, most of us will suffer because we are afraid of dying or we're afraid of our loved ones dying. And I think the idea that to just accept the fact that we all have an allotted time to live, that when that time comes, it's up. And, you know, so it's, you know, it's, it's kind of just,、uh, it, it comes down to having faith, you know.、Mm-hmm. And that, the same thing goes with immunity through faith,、uh, having faith in something above the power of a virus, which is a very small power, will get us through these difficult times. And it, it causes us to basically be less exposed to the threat of the coronavirus. Yeah, that's really true. And in section five of the first chapter, it talks about aiming to survive through religious power, as you said. And here at Happy Science, and through the books and the music, things like that, created by Riho Okawa, there are a lot of tools that can help people overcome spiritual disturbances and viral infections. So there is even a song called The Thunder. And the thunder is an anthem for overcoming the coronavirus. It is a very powerful song. And if you listen to it, I'm sure you'll be really moved by the power and the you know, spiritual merit that you can sense by listening to it. It feels like a spiritual cleansing. Yeah, exactly. And then Riho Okawa goes on to write that imagine you are purifying the path you walk. 
So, you know, I've played that music sometimes in my car through a CD player, and I always imagine that when I play this loudly, that it's purifying the area that I'm driving through. But that kind of thing might seem a little bit imaginary or childish, but actually what's really going on is the light of heaven is being emitted into this world, lighting up the darkness and driving away any kind of malevolent spiritual entities. And then that goes on to affect the material world as time progresses. So it's real and it, it really does work. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, so many ancient spiritual traditions taught us about the power of vibration and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what Ryo Kawa is taking this power of vibration and applying it into his books, his music, so that uh, it really does shift the vibrational state of yourself and the people around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally true. Next, I wanted to move on to um, chapter two, how to strengthen your immunity. He boldly declares that this is his vaccine through his spiritual power. This is a religious vaccine. And that concept is something most people might not have heard of. It's because it's so rare. And this is the one and only book that you can read that you'll be able to understand such a spiritual vaccine. It essentially works through the power of faith, which changes our mental vibrations, changes our aura, and allows our spiritual self to attract different types of beings and different types of entities to ourself. In some religious circles, you might have heard of the law of attraction. In happy science, it's called the law of same wavelengths attraction. And it essentially means that if you think cheerfully, positively, affirmatively, and constructively, you will attract bright, happy, positive things to you, including spiritual entities and including microorganisms. So you will keep away from such kind of coronavirus. And uh, that really does work in reality. Yeah. And I, I uh, one thing I really appreciated was how um, <clears throat> the comparison between viruses and like negative spiritual possession uh, was put in, which ties to tie into what you were saying. You know how if you are thinking on a vibration of fear, then you're going to attract what you fear. Mm -hmm. um, so and it's no different than any other uh, type of spirit possession. And one thing Ryokawa says is, uh, that if you're able to develop a t like a religious aura, then it's very difficult to be influenced or possessed by uh, any type of malevolent entity or spirit. Yeah, our mind really does have such a tremendous power to change this material world. And our mind and our soul is connected, which is also connected to our physical body. So those things are influencing each other. And by building up a strong body, we can also protect ourselves from putting ourselves at risk to such a virus. There is even a section in here about developing our mental and physical conditions, including our diet, including our state of mind as well, and how those things come together. And it even goes on to speak about drinking certain types of tea, which will help us to keep away negative viruses or negative uh, spiritual things. So it mentions about green tea and rooibos tea, which particularly have a power to protect us. And I was so moved. Wow. Riho Okawa knows about everything. He really is an expert on so many different subjects. Yeah. And I also appreciated that he mentioned uh, just eating healthier food, um, getting exercise, you know, and these things, these sound like basic, you know, uh, simple principles, but there are also things that uh, I wish we could say they were common sense, but they're not. In chapter three, it talks about, as I said, about life and about government and about how we can survive in this time. That also includes about work. We are currently in a, in a stage where people are depending on government to take care of them as their business is being shut down. But Riho kind of advises against this and says, don't depend on the government. Think about how we can get people back to work and how we can have the economy come back. Otherwise, we will face a similar pain in terms of economy that we were facing in terms of the virus outbreak. Can you speak about that? Yeah, sure. I, I, <clears throat> I mean, you know, in the opinion of happy science uh, and, and obviously in our opinions, you know, we all believe definitely that uh, people need to be able to go back to work. You know, it's kind of a fundamental right uh, that we must be able to work. 
and we can't rely on the government. Um, it's not healthy for our economy. It's not healthy for our soul development and our spiritual development, personal development in general. It weakens our willpower. And uh, there really is just nothing good about it, you know. And, and you know, it, it's like I understand that a lot of people right now are out of work and they may be struggling economically. And so that what they what a lot of people are think about, because it's what they're kind of told to think about through the media, is that the government should provide uh, assistance to them. But the more reasonable alternative uh, that is better all around is just to let people go to work. It's really simple as that. Right. And we kind of put ourselves in a position where the government was just listening to the epidemiologists and the scientists and not listening to the business leaders not listening to the economic advisors, not listening to different aspects of the society, and trying to balance the different interests at hand. It became lopsided, and people just started trusting the scientists to lead the government. And scientists have never you know, become experts in economy. They don't know what it takes to uh, keep an economy afloat in this kind of time. So we have to be able to think about the different balance of interests and take things on a balanced approach. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and uh, you know, the another interesting thing with uh, taking advice from scientists is that although they are the experts in their fields, part of it is that they aren't trained in other fields. The other thing is that they are overexposed to what's going on in their field. So even if there's uh, scientists who genuinely believe that it's for the good of uh, a nation to be shut down, that's because they're being exposed to this type of information nonstop. So they're not exposed enough to other information. Mm. It's like if you ask, uh, I know someone who works in an emergency room and he is adamant that this coronavirus situation is terrible. And I said to him, well, yeah, but you work 18 hours a day around people who are experiencing it. So you're not in the rest of the world where most people are healthy, the vast majority of people. And I think that's, you know, we have to consider that type of mentality. That's why it's so important to have uh, multiple perspectives. Yeah, especially being able to think from the perspective of keeping the nation afloat and keeping the nation prospering and trying to understand from a big perspective what that takes. It's not a simple answer. It's not, you know, just something that one person or one group of people know, but you have to take into account the multiple groups of different influences. Yeah. And that's the idea of a republic. That's why we don't have a dictatorship. You right. know, we need different views, and that's so important. Right. So with all that said, there is a lot of spiritual ways that you can protect yourself in this book, including the power of meditation. So there is mentioned in here about a certain meditation called the golden butter meditation. So that is a meditation which came from the history of Buddhism. And Buddhism taught this method, but now happy science is teaching this method. It's a way to essentially keep ourselves and our immunities strong. It's a way to bring in spiritual light into our material bodies, strengthen our auras, and essentially shine in a golden light, which keeps away all types of negativities from evil spirits to viruses. And those types of practices are being practiced now, and you can practice it at your local Happy Science location. In addition, there's also, as we mentioned before, the power of faith as a spiritual vaccine to keep you safe. And there's a lot of other small tips and tricks throughout this book that will keep you protected. So please read it very carefully and closely and try to find any type of advantage you might gain from this type of a book. I'm sure it will take you a long way. John, to end this book, could I ask you to read from the afterword and try to summarize this book in the words of Riho Okawa? Riho Okawa says, basically, each of you must strengthen your immunity, produce wisdom, and restart your economic activities. If not, large businesses, nations, and municipalities will fail, and only hatred and sorrow will remain. There is still no effective vaccine at this time, so please go back to the power of faith once again. Possession by a group of tiny viruses is basically no different from possession by evil spirits. If so, you can drive them away using the power of God or Buddha. With this book, you must fight against Grim Reapers. All right, let's fight against Grim Reapers and uh, let's protect ourselves from the coronavirus recession. 
You can get this book at major bookstores including Barnes & Noble and Amazon.com. For more information, visit OkalaBooks.com. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.